Exhaust Systems Go. Clear the lift off. Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience 2024 Mexico Open. DraftKings picks, plays, weather, ownership, building some lineups. Going to break it all down for you and more. Pat, obviously not here. He's on vacation. Well, vacation, you guys probably saw his shirtless picks on the beach that he posted up here on the Mayo Media Network. But myself, my partner over at Ship it Nation, James, is going to jump in. You, you know him better as Degenerate75. We're going to hop through it like Pat and myself usually do and break it all down for you. You're going to go through it. And then, of course, we'll still have the head-to-head -head draft at the end. We'll also build the Mayo Special. We, we've got a thought process that Pat should be here for this one. There's a lot of good plays in this field that he would love to be on. And he did talk about his bets, like I mentioned, where you can go and check those out. He's got it all up over on X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it. But James, bring you in, man. Very exciting, you know, first week for us over at Ship It Nation. We had the merger with DGen 75 but we're here to talk all things Mexico Open. How's it going, my friend? Thanks for stepping in. Appreciate you. Pretty good. Never thought I'd be on the Pat Mayo show with no Pat. Didn't have that on my uh, this lifetime bingo card, but uh, pretty excited to be here. Fill in for Pat. The guy deserves hardest working man in the industry. He deserves a vacation. He can he can uh, sneaky flex on uh, Twitter with his shirt off the once. The guy runs, you say, seven and a half miles in an hour. What a crazy man. What a crazy person. The only thing missing from that beach was the treadmill. We were him walking on that <laughs> while he's doing all the picks. Like we've do we have proof past. that he wasn't running when he took that picture? I don't even know. No, no, he had the beach, he had the palm trees, he had the water, but good for Pat. You know, shout out to him, appreciate it as always. It's going to be a fun one, though. We'll still break it down as usual. Lots of things that we could talk about for this tournament here and the big conversation around the dynamic pricing. There's guys at 5K. Tony Finau, what do you do with him? Up at 12K, everyone's going to be talking about him. 35 to 40%. We'll get to ownership here in a second. But James, I want to start with just what you see. I mean, you do the ownership. We call you the, the leader of the sweaty tryhards. I mean, you're digging into that. What, what are you seeing from an ownership perspective, and then uh, from just this tournament in general, how are you seeing it with the dynamic pricing, all that? And then we'll get to weather in just a second, but just a grand scheme overview to start things off. Yeah, so like the the dynamic pricing kind of you know mixes it up a little bit this week with with guys being able to with you being able to add a five thousand dollar guy to your lineup twelve thousand dollars for Tony Fee now is not near as punitive as it would be on a normal week right on a normal week where you don't want to touch anybody usually below sixty five hundred dollars playing a twelve thousand dollar Tony Fee now really starts to like change what you can do with the rest of your lineup and people for whatever reason like to feel good about their lineups right they want to feel safe and you can't do that on a normal week with a twelve thousand dollar guy because you're going to have some icky sobs in there right but this week if you can find one guy that you don't consider disgusting down in the fifty seven hundred dollar range you can get tony fino in there and still build a very nice lineup with guys that are going to make you feel uh comfortable so you know, it, it, there's going, it, it's going to make the guys up top more playable. But then there's also the other problem of like, they just completely mispriced Emiliano Grillo. So no one's going to play him. Uh, but if they want to, he will not be that hard to get in there. Yeah, I think you said it best. And we'll talk about when we get to the lineup building portion of the show, but just to see what that actually looks like, we'll pull it up on screen. We'll do the screen share, go through it all with you guys as usual. But you can see some of that. I think the other angle to it though, and I talked yesterday with Hoop about it on the Ship It Nation YouTube station. You and I did the first look earlier this week is they kind of softened everything out. So it's like you to, to what we talked about, you can build with one 5K guy and the other five look very solid, but you need something like that or a low 6K guy or something. What Hoop and I talked about yesterday, and we'll go to it when we start building these lineups, is that you can also just build a Finau lineup with like Finau, an 8K guy and four 7K guys and get away with that too. And, and you know, leave the allure of, do I want to put one of those chibis in there to make everything look a little bit better if you think some of the, 8K guys are the same as the nines or the 7K guys are the same as the eights. So we'll talk that when we get there. You are also known as hashtag not a poor, especially when it comes to weather. So you want to talk about that quickly. There's definitely been some chatter around about first round leader bets and showdowns. And this is the course where in the afternoon, the wind picks up, even if it says it's not going to, I've got it up here now. I know you use some other stuff, so I'll get it from you, but just looking at it, it doesn't look like a ton, but I am curious to get your thoughts. What are you seeing? And then what do you know about this course when it comes to weather? Yeah. So first of all, I do pay the eighteen ninety nine a year for Wendy, so I can have the fancy projections. And the answer is this: like this is the great thing about playing on these you know, these resort courses that they tend to be coastal and they tend to have very consistent weather, right? And the the weather for the first two days looks 
exactly like what you would expect at a resort course. It is going to be beautiful in the morning, right? Where you're talking upper 60s into the 70s, and then it is going to be sunny and 80, you know, uh, low 80s all afternoon. All right, you know, like, well, with, with moderate winds picking up in the afternoon, probably seven to eight miles an hour. But here's what we can tell you. The, the morning conditions are going to be nutted. Okay, the course is going to be the softest in the morning. It is going to have the least winds in the morning. The greens are going to be the least chewed up. So, like, if you're a first-round leader guy and you're playing anybody that's not in the morning, you just love negative EV bets. That's what I would tell you. Um, as far as like us, cause we're playing week long, we're talking about the week long. I don't think you're going to get much of an advantage this week, right? If you're trying to, cause y- your guys are going to play the PM one day and the AM the other. So you're not going to catch much of a week long, but I think at showdown, there could be something worth attacking there because these morning conditions going back and looking at the uh, last year when they played here, a noticeable edge for the morning guys. Yeah, and like I always say, one thing I'll attack from just a building and sets perspective, we talked about in our Discord today over at ShipItNation.com. Promo code MAYO if you want to get a discount over there. And then don't forget about Fantasy National, 20% off using promo code MAYO, the revamped system. He can go through it all more on other shows. But just to break it all down, there's a lot of new features over at Fantasy National. So check that out. Use promo code MAYO. Get 20% off over there. Uh, Just to say it, though, I I do look at some of the PMAM still. You know, I always go after that just because when you think about it, if the morning conditions are going to be the, are, are possibly slightly better, I should say, and everyone does get the same same, I still kind of want some of those punt plays maybe going out PM AM because they don't have to think about conditions or the cut line pressure of getting through and making a cut. And in a field like this, there's a lot of uh, lowly names, if you will. We'll get to them. We know them, but not everybody does. As far as the actual course is concerned and playing it, James, what are your thoughts on just anything particular that you're looking for? I've heard this Bombers narrative all week. Everyone always focuses on that. That's a big thing here. But what are you looking at for this course from a stats perspective before we get into breaking down some of these lineups? I mean, the course is long and bombing the ball out there. I don't think it's essential for success, but it sure as shit doesn't hurt. So I I think that that's going to be where people naturally go is towards bombers. But I I would say more important than bombing it off the tee this week are guys who can just absolutely flush it from 175 plus. Because even when you do bomb it out there, you're going to have mid to long irons in. And these greens, the one thing that they have is they tend to be pretty firm, right? Not a lot of rain in this area. These greens tend to be firm. So if you are not, you know, if you can't control a iron, a long iron specifically into these greens, you're not going to to have tons of birdie looks and uh, uh if you're not if, if this is going to be the birdie fest we're all anticipating and you don't have lots of birdie looks good luck pal you're gonna have a hell of a week yeah remember to smash the like button if you're watching this on playback also make sure to subscribe to the mayo media network and then on top of it subscribe to the mayo newsletter as well he's got a lot more in there covering you even while he's away he's got stuff going on so just check that out but the other thing i want to talk about too before we get into the the tiers of the ownership and we'll just go quickly on that but just to ask about You know, one thing I thought of this week for sure is it does feel it's going to spread out some because of the sixes and the fives and the, you know, 7K, by the way, is only 18 guys within the 7K range. But with that said, I do feel like we still have some heavy congestion in certain ranges. Are you seeing the same thing because it is a lazier week, a worse field after a big week like the Genesis, all these factors, big tournaments. So do you see that as far as ownership? I know you're digging in today and going to get it up over at shipitnation.com, but anything you notice there? Yeah, I just ran my uh, first rough draft ownership. I always like to do that first thing Wednesday morning. And the, the thing that I'm really noticing is there's two things that's that's particularly pushing ownership. And obviously, people who hit the ball far is doing it. And then, you know, like on a week like this, where a lot there's a lot more slimy players, the 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 hashtag uh, 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 touts, right? The people who are talking about this stuff have a lot more influence. So if you hear whoever, right? Let's just, I'm just pulling this name out of my ass because he's on my screen right now. Alejandro Tosti gets talked up, right? He is going to come in at bigger ownership than he normally would on a given week because you you kind of have people that aren't as familiar with the players in this field and the games of these players in this field and how good of a course fit they are so they're going to listen to the talking faces on their podcast on their youtubes on all that stuff and so those are the two things that really seem to be pooling ownership davis thompson is a dude that i've literally heard talked up on every single show i've listened to and he's going to be a don't get joke Yeah, and you'll have that covered tonight over on your stream on the Degenerate 75 YouTube channel. You guys can check that out every single week on Wednesdays. That'll talk more in-depth on this. And I like the part you do, too, where, you know, the steam and the moonwalking back. It's like you could sort of see it last week. I know you had JT primed up for, for heavy ownership and then already higher than most of the market had him at. And then you talked on that stream about the steam. On that stream about the steam. You said it. Yeah, so you, you did have that one covered. Turned out he came in over 30%. In some places. So let's dive in. I pulled it up here on the screen. Just curious your thoughts. Let's just do the ranges quickly, but not for picks and plays. We're not doing that. Obviously, we're talking about ownership specifically. I think everybody knows 
Tony Finau. And we will circle back to him. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it at the start. Let's get through these ranges first. But to me, I'm seeing Finau and maybe Hogard as sort of the main two there. You already talked a little bit about Emiliano Grillo, but what are you seeing in this upper 10K and above range for ownership on your end? Yeah, so it, up up top is probably the clearest picture you're going to get as far as like who is the chalk and who are the pivots, right? Finau and and Hogard, right? The ladies of the night in Mexico are going to be very <clears throat> happy with Hogard being there. Uh, they uh, they are wildly more popular than everybody else. Grio and Olison, Ophir and Olison, very not popular. I got them like li literally if they came in at single digit ownership, it wouldn't surprise me, right? They're just overpriced and people don't like to pay for overpriced golfers, especially when they're over $10,000. It's a psychological effect of DraftKings players. And then Thomas Dietrich is just somewhere in the middle of those two, right? He's not going to be low owned, but he's also not going to be that huge shock that that old Hoygaard and Finau is going to be. So the real question is, is what do you do with Finau and Hogard, right? And can you play them together? I think might be the sneaky way to get different because as popular as they both are, I don't think there's going to be a ton of people playing them both together just because of the restrictive nature of their price tags. And I love that you brought that up. We're already thinking the same way. We're going to get to that when we go to the lineup building, but also at the end of this, when we get to the specific Tony Finau conversation, that's where my take would be. And I'll go to that more when we get there. Let's keep it moving. Let's go down to this 9K range. Mark Hubbard up to Keith Mitchell. Who are some of the guys you're seeing? Again, we're not talking picks and plays. We're talking ownership. Who is standing out as some of the guys that you're seeing the ownership lean towards in this 9K range? Well, of course, it's going to be the two guys that I was most excited about on the show Monday, right? So uh, two guys that I think are going to be lingering right at or above 20% are going to be Steven Yeager and uh, um, uh, 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 Taylor Pendrith, right? Two guys that I said were, you know, I had three guys that I loved in that range on the initial show we did Monday. And so, of course, two of them are just going to be donkey chalk all over the place. Yeah, this is sad. Can't even get my, my Canadian guy, Taylor Pendrith, a pitcher on there. But there's a lot of flags this week that we'll see. Uh, outside of them, sort of the secondary options, who, who are you seeing pop up besides those two? Because I think you nailed it with them, as I would expect. But who else is popping up? Or is there anybody sort of popping up that you think could be good that's getting little to no ownership in this range? I saw today a couple of these guys uh, get into the Masters, right? Neiman got in. We saw that, but some other guys as well, and Rio was one of them. But is there other guys in this range as secondary chalk that you see or any that pop up as good values at low to no ownership? No, I mean, literally those two guys are just sucking all the ownership out of this range. I was kind of surprised. Uh, you know, I, I think I think Keith Mitch will get a little bit just because he's a pretty good established player, right? If you just look at long-term talent, he's better than a lot of these guys. But, you know, a dude like Patrick Rogers, who I, I will be open with, I think is a loser piece of shit. But, like, he's really, if there's ever a course that guy could do well on, it's probably this. And I think guys like him, Mackenzie Hughes, Ryan Fox, uh, Rio, those guys are going to be, like, nothing owned. Like, single-digit ownership, which you rarely see on guys in the 9,000s because we know rule number one of DraftKings lineup building. People like to spend all their money. And guys in the 9,000 just inherently get some ownership because of that. Yeah, agreed. Uh, as far as EVR goes, I'll, I'll talk on that one quickly. People hear me joke all the time that you can't spell never without EVR. And I always joke during the football season about hashtag never Mahomes. But there's a, there's a rule and a caveat to that. I always say it. It's never Mahomes on main slates. For yes. me, I prefer him on short slates. The way I would trickle that over into the golf streets is I say never EVR except for showdown. There it is. is. There it is. You know, EVR says showdown, showdown God except when we do. But the thing about it is, is the, the strength of field still matters to me as well. And again, the price is not good. It's 9,500, but it's, I think it's kind of fair considering what the guy could do or can do in a field of this strength. So I get it at least with a guy like him, but I just will note that let's keep it moving. Let's go to this 8k range. You mentioned Davis Thompson. That's Mayo's guy, man. He will definitely make the Mayo special later on ownership or not, but definitely agree with you also that I see him getting the early ownership in this range. Who else are you seeing in this 8K range? Eckrode up to Thompson, getting a little bit of love here. Yeah, I, I, I think, let's see, Ekro, uh, where's my salary? So I think the only other one that's even going to touch some decent ownership is probably going to be Michael Kim. Once again, uh, it, the, the ownership is really pooling this week, right? We're not getting that, you know, a bunch of guys 10 to 15%. We're getting some guys at 20% and then a bunch at like 8 or 9%. Um, and uh, the, the, the uh, Ekro will probably get to double digits. Kim will probably get to double digits. And Davis Thompson will probably be up over 20% because I just, he's already going to be popular. And I think he gets steamed tonight. Um and so I think those three guys are basically going to gobble up most of the ownership in this range. So if you're somebody who loves to pivot, this is a tremendous range to pivot because there's going to be legitimately guys three to 5% owned in this range, right around those 20% owned guys. Yeah. And I don't know if when we make that lineup, if Pat can pivot because he loves Davis Thompson and fan now of the show, Michael Kim, who just was on. If you guys haven't checked that episode out, you can go back. It's a great time 
uh, you know, just some downtime Thursday, Friday, after everything locks up for golf, you can go back and check it out. But an awesome episode, very transparent with everything around the tour and just around stuff that he talks about with stats and greens and all different things. So go check that show out here on the Mail Media Network if you haven't already. Uh, what about your boy? Don't sleep on. He's up here. Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I, so like, I still, I only have him at like, I, I think other people are just overreacting. I only have him around nine percent, which you know, maybe I could, he could get up to eleven or something, but I don't think he's gonna be a runaway uh, train, right? Like, there's just not, I, 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 at least from the shows I've been listening, not a lot of people talking up old Jake Knapp, right? And uh, I'm not going to sleep on him. I'll almost certainly have him in my player pool. But I, it, if you're thinking he's going to be 15, 20 percent owned, I, I would bet good money against that. I love that you said that. Actually, it's a good segue because the guy right behind him in the pricing is Cameron Champ. And I think it's a good conversation just to stop here for a second and talk about that. So the joke at the start of the week, you and I even had it together. I brought it up was, you know, Tony Finau, Brandon Wu, uh, David, who was it? Um, there, was, there was two more. Dave, it was uh, Cameron Champ and Patrick Rogers were four guys that have the best course history here. Yes, the two times they played here the last two years, they did very well. That is correct. And Toasty would fit into that because he had a good result last year. And then when they played it three years ago at the Latin America Tour, he had a great finish there as well. So there's some of these guys that are fitting into it. Everyone's talking about them, and I'll use Cam Champ as the prime example here, like they're going to be this super chalk, yet I actually think it's people just mentioning them and then not going to click their name. Like I, I would still think, that way more people are going to play Davis Thompson and Michael Kim more than Cam Champ. So talk about that. You did just talk about a little bit with Jake Knapp, but just on those guys in general, do you think people are just making fun of them and then not clicking them because of that? And you could play them now because of that reason? Or do you think they're just not good plays like Champ, horrible form coming in, but he was coming into those other two events as well. As a dude who studies ownership far too much, like more than any normal human being should, I will tell you right now that course history always, always gets outweighed by who is perceived as a better value. A better value is the number one indicator of how owned somebody's going to be. And Cam Champ at 8,600, by any metric, is overpriced. By any metric, is overpriced this week, and he is not a quote-unquote good value. So even though he has good course history here, and he, uh, you know, it's clearly a good course fit, that can easily be overweighed by the fact that he's overpriced and people are going to play guys that they feel are better golfers at a better value, right? That will lead to ownership more than somebody having good course history. Course history can move the needle on ownership, but not as much as somebody who is a good, a, a good perceived value. We see it every week when somebody's underpriced. Justin Thomas was underpriced last week. That's why I knew I already had him super chalky and I knew he would exceed that even more because people, when they build their DraftKings lineups, cannot pass up a good value. Yeah, is that how you felt a little bit about Michael Kim here when you mentioned it yeah. earlier? Just My the fact that people Michael see that. Kim, Michael Kim is a, objectively a better golfer than like six of the eight dudes right ahead of him. He's playing yeah. better. He is on a better trajectory, and and like he's going to be a good value. And people love a good value. He can be the third or fourth guy in your lineup. And if that's the third or fourth guy in your lineup, you probably feel safe about that lineup. And everybody likes to feel safe about their DraftKings lineups, which I would implore you not to do. But you know, you do you, boo. Yeah, and one thing about it, like people say, oh, but he just missed a cut and all that. It's not really that. I know it, it sucks on desktop. It doesn't actually list like the, the mobile app where the pricing is on the right. But I think the other thing to your point of a good value is that he was priced in the 7K range in some of these much stronger fields. Now in the weaker field, he's coming in at just 8,200. People are just going to naturally see that and say, wait a sec. I don't care about last week. It's kind of the opposite effect of the Cam Champ one, like you mentioned, where it's like, it doesn't really matter about last week. It was a tougher field, all these factors. Let's go with what he's priced like against those around him. So I he's think 11, he's $1,100 cheaper than, than Ryan Fox and $1,200 cheaper than McKenzie Hughes. I like Fox and Hughes, but like, there's no way he should be a thousand dollars cheaper than those guys. Yeah. Which will come into play when we get to the lineup construction here, just shortly going through that as well. I think that's what people will think like when they're building their lineups. And that's going to help us look at some of these decisions. And to your point, you can get Michael Kimmon as your third, fourth golfer and feel still like you have a really nice lineup. So let's go to this seven K range. I mentioned it earlier. Part of the dynamic pricing and spacing out the 6K and the 5K range to fit all that in, I think it's 18 guys in the 7K range, 38 guys in the 6K range, and then, fair enough, a bunch of guys in the 5K range because it's kind of like, who cares about them? They're here. Figure it out yourself. I get it. So talk to me about this 7K range. What do you see here? Not really upper or lower because it's only 18 guys. Overall, 7K range, what are you seeing from an ownership perspective? First of all, let me just tell you, DraftKings did a really good job. I, I they feel like they normally just jam everybody in the seven K range, and so you end up having golfers priced a hundred dollars away, uh, you know, uh, uh, separated each other by a hundred dollars, even though one's noticeably better than the other. When you treat the seven Ks as just kind of like an eight K light, I really think that this helps you, you know, like make 
like it makes the pricing more fair. So kudos to DraftKings on this dynamic pricing, especially in these shitty fields where you do see a a, a large disparity because you got some real fucking crusty golfers in there. Uh, as far as the seven K goes, there's basically three guys I see getting ownership: Sh Kim break my soul i was hoping nobody would be on him but he's getting it jonathan vegas i could have told you he was going to get he's going to get he's already chalk and i think he'll get steamed up and then lastly sam stevens is seventy one hundred dollars every week now he's in a shitty field and he's seventy one hundred dollars what did i just tell you people love a value old sammy stevens will be very popular this week yeah making cuts putting up sort of whatever the scores dictate but just seventy one hundred you got to expect him to be super popular here we'll wait for your stream tonight uh, to hear about Donkey Chalk or not, because he's 7,100. So uh, he fits every build that you could possibly make. We'll talk about that when we get to it here in a little bit. Anybody else in that secondary range that you see, or is there just a lot of guys in the single digits after that? Literally, I, the only other ones that I could see maybe touching double digits would be Toasty, uh, uh, maybe maybe the Viking Vince Norman. Those would be probably the only other ones. You know, Grayson Sig, when I, when I just did my initial run, he had more ownership than I anticipated, but still single digits, right? Yeah. And between Norman and Vegas, it's pretty clear that it's going to be Vegas over Norman, right? Uh, Yeah, definitely. Vegas. Vegas is just, I mean, yes, it's going to be Vegas because, you know, like he speaks Spanish and this is in Mexico. So you got to run with that narrative. Yeah, that's, that's how some of the picks are made. I mean, there is options in here. So when we get to building. That's, a, that's what lineup. we should do. We should do an all Spanish speaking lineup. That, that way yeah. We can build a good one. We can build that for sure. Yeah, the, uh, the there is some guys that when we get to go you know, not doing the picks and plays or anything right now on this spot, we'll get to it when we get to the lineups. But the, you know, Spawns, Sigs, Goderups, Novaks, there is guys down in this range. And you can move to Tyler Duncan as we get into the 6K range. There's lots of guys down here. And I think that's going to be your conversation piece when it comes to Sam Stevens at very heavy ownership at 7,100 as the safety play. You kind of don't really need that here. You want the explosion ceiling play. Yeah, you want a made cut. Yeah, you can still find ways to get different with them, not who you play, it's how you play them. But just thinking of all the dudes in this range and talk to me about some of those dudes. Who are you seeing here? Anybody at all? I guess frame it up first off from 6,900 all the way to the bottom. Nice. Is there anybody standing out or is it just going to be a mishmash of trying some of this guy, trying some of that guy? And then here you get a few guys that are the, you know, five to 10 percent range or something like that. When you get down uh, into the, you know, 6,900 and lower, I, I think that you really are just looking for anybody over like 5% is kind of like a hold on a second. That's kind of a lot of ownership for a slappy down here. And just a few guys that if I had to guess that would fall over that 5% range, and none of these guys are like disgusting. We're not talking like they're going to be 15%, but like T. Dong, you already mentioned, uh, Joseph, don't call me Joshua Bramlett, Garrett Kego, because once again, people love a fucking value. Uh, Parker Cootie, I didn't see that one coming, right? Um, and Carl Yoon, because for whatever reason, they priced Carl Yoon at 6,200. Not sure what the hell they were doing there, but those are really the only guys I would bet get over 5% uh, in, in, down there. And at the Sony Open, he went T4 and had a bunch of scoring, made put up 106 points. So Carl, Carl Yoon should be 7,200 in this field. I don't know what they were doing. They must have the intern price in him. Yeah, that's, that's one value down there. We'll see for sure. There's other guys, though, down here, too. So anybody in the 5Ks at all or anybody that stood out there that you saw is getting even a little bit? Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Callum Taron, I have uh, like 3% would be the highest one. Yeah. I think Taron, I think, uh, I've heard a few people mention Lipsky. I saw actually oh. doing the tidbits last night, people betting Doherty again. Hey, I don't think it's going to translate. And to your point, you can pretty much get away with whatever you want down here because you're still going to be a sub 10%, almost every case of whoever you're putting into your lineups that you can make it work. It just depends on how you want to do your overall roster construction any other thoughts on ownership before we get to just that the roster construction segment where we start building out these lineups and talk about some of the picks plays everything within there i do have one thought people ask me all the time why do you love these slimy fields at these stupid tournaments nobody cares about them well first of all that's the answer no one cares about them i love these weeks because everybody's just listening to the podcast and the youtubes and uh you know whatever tout site they're a part of and they're just taking those picks because they're not familiar with these guys more so even if they've heard the name davis thompson do they really know the intricacies of davis thompson's game and where he's good at and the flaws of his game because i play that mother father all the time i know him very well right and when you see that it allows you to play the game so much more this week i will be pivoting so much more this week than i do in a normal week because i know that ownership is going to condense around who is being talked up in the industry and i love weeks like this because at a field like this all these guys have one thing in common they're not particularly great and when you're not great you have a much wider range of outcomes and donkey chalk gets punished so much more frequently at these tournaments 
yeah, if you want to check out everything we've got going on, you guys can go over to shipitnation.com. It's got all this under PGA. There's tons of stuff for the showdown. We've got Degenerate75's new tool. Well, his tool that he's always had, but it's now new to the site, The Stone, which I'll show you guys in a second. Lee Aldrich's course fit rankings, all the other content, projections, ownership, and more. You'll see here there is PGA memberships only. If you guys go check it out, the annual is everything we offer for the entire season, including the swing season, projections for DraftKings, ownership, the Stone tool, I'll show off in a second, course fit rankings, all that and more. You just go join today. You scroll down. Make sure you use that code Mayo. You just type it in there. It'll apply successfully. You'll get it for $269 for the entire season. It's less than a dollar a day. And I'll show you quickly the stone because, James, you could talk about this. But if you're looking for a place, just a base starting point, you're just getting into PGA DFS or you want to take your game to the next level, we have the education courses. We have the beginner's course. We have all that stuff. But if you want the golfer, this is last week's, but if you want the golfer, their salaries, their exact, you know, our projection, their exact projection for ownership, their, their round one and two tee times, the wave that they're in, their win equity, the top 20, just a nice clean sheet to find all this in and then broken down by guys you could use in cash, high upside plays, GPP, high leverage, all of these things and more. Get over to shipitnation.com, use that code Mayo and get onto the stone. We've got it for regular classic slate and for showdown. James, anything else you want to add on that before we talk some Tony Fino? No, I just, you know, I, I most of the people aren't like me and you and just have endless amounts of hours to dedicate towards PGA DFS. And so they, they get home Wednesday night, they get their kids to bed, and then they're like, hell, I want to play some PGA DFS this week. And they want to go make lineups, but they haven't had time to spend hours on it like us. The stone is this thing that you can take 30 to 60 minutes, get caught up on all the relevant information you need, and make informed decisions to make lineups that are competitive and not just names that you pulled out of your ass while you're sitting on the shitter Wednesday night at 9 o'clock. That's the goal of the stone. Yep, check it all out. If you guys don't want just, if you want more than just the PGA, I should say, you can get all access. We've got now three more sports added with NASCAR, college football as well too. So check it out there. You guys can get it all. Let's talk Tony Finau specifically. James, we did this, uh, it was a couple of weeks ago when Mayo and I were on. We had to have a whole Scotty Scheffler segment. I don't think Tony Finau is a Scotty Scheffler conversation, but the reason he is such a big piece to talk about is because at 12K, you still have 7,600 remaining left. We're about to get to building these lineups. And there's tons of ways you can go about it. We talked earlier. If you think, uh, you who did you say there down there? 6,200, right? Boom. You yeah, still uh, have almost 8,000 left over. If we start, because we're not going to start here. We're going to get back to it in a second. But let's have the Tony Finau conversation here. Uh, you know, what are you seeing right now? 36, 37% and something like the big $20? Yeah, he'll be between 35 and 40%. I feel pretty confident about that uh, because at the end of the day, uh, people are going to want to have that safety, right? He, his course history here, him being a noticeably better player than everybody else in this field over long-term form. Um, and now you factor in this new dynamic pricing. It's just so easy to get him in there. You just showed how easy it was. Carl Yoon at 6,200, I don't even consider him a punk. Carl Yoon's a real golfer, right? And uh, the fact that you can do that, that's going to keep his ownership high. But I think that there is basically three ways to, to play Tony Finau this week, right? I think that you can just straight up be, uh, you can fade him, right? Anytime there's a guy like Scotty Scheffler or Tony Finau, who is clearly better than the rest of the field, but they have a putter that is not behaving, well, then there's always a path that he could just lose seven strokes putting this week, finish T38, and wouldn't even sniff a optimal type lineup, right? I also think that maybe the play is you just come in a little bit underweight on Tony Finau, right? Play him in 20, 25% of your exposure, but don't be as he heavily involved as, him, uh, as the field. And if you are going to play Tony Fee now, I would say this, consider just lock button him, right? If you want to play Tony Fee now, you think he's going to win and you feel confident about him, we'll at least get some leverage on the mother father, put him in every single one of your lineups, and then you're leveraged on him, right? That's the three ways I'm considering playing him. Yes, I know there's more ways, but that's the three ways I would consider. Yeah, I like all that. I, I would say like this, this is an example I'll add on because people talk about it all the time and you've talked about it a ton in the past. And I agree with it a hundred percent, especially for, you know, sort of what we usually are talking to and focusing on is novice intermediate players trying to step up to the next level, get better at their game, improve their DFS play. It is good to take stance that lock button or underweight or fade altogether. Like I get all that. And that makes sense to me perfectly, but I will say this, like, here's a, just one example. Again, no weather edge that we're seeing this week. You could always play a weather angle or a wave advantage if you wanted to, or try for one, but just to note it, like if Tony Finau is coming in, at 35% call it. And I want to play Tony Fee now, but I don't want to lock him. I don't know if I'm going to come in just underweight or not because I'm not sure where his ownership's at. And I, let's say I say I'll get 30 to 35% and whatever happens, happens. Here's just one example that I always talk about where there's levels to it. of saying like, okay, if he at 
in the tournament that you're in is built with a bunch of lineups with all these other chalk plays, then I could build 35%, the same as the field with Tony Finau, but be extremely leveraged via roster construction, lineup build type, which I'll go to in a second, or who I'm using in those lineups. What if all my Tony Finau lineups have nobody over 10% after Tony Finau? Well, that's huge leverage to how most the Tony Finau lineups are built. What if Tony, who has a AM tea time on Thursday, what if all my lineups with Tony Finau are AM PM only? Well, that's huge because not many, I mean, a ton of those Tony lineups are going to be that. And what if the wind does pick up and it ends up being way better for me? Uh, Thursday afternoon, the winds come out of nowhere, destroy the field and you need it, AM, PM. I'm just making up examples though to show you where I could have the same number of the field as Tony Finau lineups, but not really just be paying the rake or being the going with the chalk or doing all that because I'm building my Tony Finau lineups differently. What if I build all my Tony Finau lineups with multiple 6K guys or no 6K guys? So there's lots of ways you can do it. Don't just fade them to fade them. But if you don't like something about it with the putter, if you like the other guys after him, if you like different constructions, do what is best for you and go with that. There's a lot of weeks of PGA DFS, a lot of different ways we can do it. So anything else you want to do, uh, you don't want to talk about with Tony Finau before we build out the, the quote unquote chalkiest lineup that we can? No, I, I just, I, I, to me, that's where the, the this week begins. When you get, ever start getting those guys that are just w- way higher owned than everybody else, I always begin my process with what am I doing with this guy, and then from there, I kind of start extrapolating out the rest of my process because to, to me, he's the biggest question to answer this week on what is your game plan with him, and then you go from there. Yep, I agree. Let's uh, let's hop in. I think this is how it starts. At least you can see it on the screen there. Anybody who can't, if you're listening on the audio podcast version, that's great. Leave a review, five-star review. Pat would love those. But just to check it out here, we're starting with Finau and Sam Stevens. Also, if you are on the audio review, be sure to pull up the YouTube show where you can actually see everything. We're on here talking through it, putting it up on the screen, showing you guys everything as we enter these builds. But I've got Finau and Stevens to start. Is, this our, chalky, we- is this our chalky lineup? Yeah, we're building. What oh, do you think? The, Davis the Thompson. Thompson. Put Davis Thompson in there an hour ago. Yeah, Davis Thompson goes in. Perfect. Uh, leaves us 73-33. Where do you think we go from here? Is it, is it going to be possible to jam in like a Pendrith or something? or And then like maybe we could get like, I don't know. Can we? Oh, man. Okay, so it only leaves us 6,200. So we'd have to double up on Carl Yoon. I don't think that people want to do that. Do you think uh, people go Michael Kim, though? Uh, yeah, I think Michael Kim would make sense there, right? Yep. Uh, and then you said what is John that? Vegas what? looks popular. Oh, yeah, Vegas. That's a good one. Yep, yep. Let's see what, what is that? that does. Oh, Carl. Oh, Carl, there it is. We just we just created. That is, I I would I would almost bet you, I'd almost bet you 20 bucks that that or at least five out of six of that is the most duped lineup this week in the, in the big $20 or the big $5. <laughs> What's sad about it is that on paper, when you just think about this field, it's not the worst from a roster construction when you're saying, okay, I'm going to go 12K Tony. Again, normal week, not when every single one of these dudes is the chalk. You'd say, I skipped the 10K, I skipped the 9K, I skipped that weird 5K range that just came up with. You'd feel good about this build, but that is the the donkey chalk of the week, let's go down. I, to- I'll tell you this: I wouldn't. I I don't play cash. All right, I think cash at PGA, you're just you're rolling dice. But if I were ever going to play cash, that would be my cash lineup this week. Yeah, that would be the week to do it. So let's. Dra- All right, so back in. Let's go to the next lineup here. Had a little glitch there, but we're back. So we'll get into it next. So if that was the chalky version, what what are we doing next? Like, what what's a different way we can go about? That Finau lineup that we just talked about. I got about. a great idea. Let's do a Finau lineup because we already talked about this. Let's do a Finau lineup, but show people how you play Finau, but you play him different, right? Because as you always say, that it's not about who you play. It's about how you play him. So let's give an example of a Finau lineup that's not how everybody else will play Finau. Yeah. So w- what do you think is the best way to start it? Do you think it's going to be to put in one of these 9K guys? Or do you think you go right up to someone like Hogard or someone at the very top? Yeah, yeah, first, well, uh, so we could, I think the, the most common one is not, is, is going to be to stack another expensive guy with him. But if you want to get really icky, I think you look at old Theory Beard Anderson or, or Grio, right? Stacking them with him. But you're only doing that if you, if you actively like somebody probably down in that five or six K range, right? Cause we're almost certainly going to have to drop down there to get us back up. Um, and the other thing is, is like, there's just kind of this big forgotten about range down here in the low nine Ks, which I think you were already referencing Hughes, Fox, uh, his, uh, Hissa, Hissa, Hissa Sune. Hissa there we go. I got there. I got there. Uh, guys like that, right? Uh, uh, um, uh, the AK range is full of a bunch of guys that I don't mind playing, right? I think you could probably go fee now and then just be stacking guys like Jake Knapp, old Aaron Pumpernickel, Charlie Hoffman, 
uh, Justin Su. There's a lot of guys right there that I think are really low owned. So it's kind of like it, it's kind of got to be like, how do you want to construct this? Do you like because if, if you want to get some more expensive guys in there, you're going to have to drop down into the five or six Ks to put, put a guy with them, right? Yeah, I just wonder, like, because for me, at least personally, I don't, I don't love the sixes and fives as much. Yep. So if I was looking, how, how different do you think it is if we say, okay, let's build kind of like what we just did, but let's skip Davis Thompson. Yep. Let's skip out on Michael Kim. Maybe it is like a Justin Suh, your yep. SH Kim play. Like, we, we are still at 7,200 here. We don't have Davis Thompson. We don't have Michael Kim. We've got some different guys and then be able to and, land. And what, look, go put Sam Stevens in there because I want to make a point. Yes, I know Sam Stevens is huge donkey chuck, right? And typically right. speaking, we don't want to play donkey chuck with donkey chuck. But if you have four pivots in your lineup, you can play Sam Stevens and Tony Fee now, right? Everybody gets caught up in this thing called cumulative ownership where you just add up the ownership of all six players. But what's a better method of measuring the, the uniqueness of your lineup is product ownership where you multiply them. And when you have three or four guys in your lineup that are like five or 6%, you're going to be dramatically different than the field even if you do have two donkey chalk pieces yeah and even if this like you mentioned like Eckroad or a mcneely or something earlier not only are you already different because you have justin so you have Eckroad, you got sh kim who will be like you'll have your two popular guys your mid-range guy two really low owned guys in so and Eckroad, and then you're not in the like here's one for yep. pat right old wacky valamaki you, you yep. finish it out with something like that you're you're completely different or he go yep Exactly right. I, I, you could do that, right? I do. I will warn you. I think Ekrok will probably be around 12%. Not that that's like super chalky, but he will be higher on them than we probably think. What do you think Higo will be at, though? Six, six to eight. So, so again, going back to this, this is not the be all end all. And what you talked about there a second ago with product ownership, very important to consider. But just to note it, okay, 35% fee now. Uh, let's say Sam Stevens gets up to 15 to 17, whatever it is, like, like something very bad, but we'll, we'll just go with it. Even if SH gets to 12-13 and Ekro gets to 12-13, you should be good with Su and Higo both under 10% and maybe even under 5%. Mm -hmm. and, and just an example to show it. Again, can you take it a step further and get even more leverage? Sure. But going back to the builds, it's still a 12-8-8-7-7-6 and only two guys the same from the previous build. It doesn't have Michael Kim. It doesn't have Davis Thompson. It doesn't have Carl Wan. It doesn't have any of those guys that you would see. So if I just enter this one, I would feel a little bit better uh, yeah. about that. Just I'll tell you right now, that lineup in a GPP has all the same upside as the other one. Like it, it is just as good as far as winning a GPP. Now, if you're trying to min cash, if you're a min cash bro, which why would you try to min cash in GPPs? I would definitely take the first lineup over that one. But if you were trying to play to win them, that is a lineup that could go win it. Yeah, I agree. And I like that. Let, let's try though. Your original take was we'll, we'll talk about the two popular guys up top. What if you just put a guy like Hogard in with them. Let's try a different Tony Tony Finau version where you're going double stud. Again, could you just take him down? Well, what we'll do is we'll build this one. Then we'll flip it to Pendrith because that's what we usually do on this. And people are going with the popular. We know the pivots around it that are there. We'll have those covered for you over at Ship It Nation. Talk more on that on your stream tonight, I'm sure, when you break down the donkey chalk and all of that. But just to note it, like let's just look at this build for a second. How do you see this one building out? Is it too much? to go put Stevens in it again? Or, you know, should you look at him and then who else can you fit in? Yeah, I, to me, the real question is, who are you going to play down low? Because I think this lineup is almost certainly going to need either that Carl Ewan at 6,200, or if you really want to get slimy, maybe get down there to a Callum Terran or something like that. Um, somebody that's really going to free it up. I mean, just doing those two got you back to 7,000. So, I mean, that's not that bad. That's a pretty quote-unquote safe lineup right there. Uh, is there anybody in that low 7K range that's really appealing, like 74? Because I'm thinking we could go Parker Cootie, who uh, is is sadly getting steamed up. And then we could probably, oh, man, we can almost get back up to Vegas. I think we're going to be $100 off. If you go Vegas, and then we're going to be $100 off from Cootie, right? Yep. Ah, damn it. So um, just wait here. Let's see. Was there anybody at 7 flat? No. Carl, you no. 10, 7, no. So, yeah, I mean, that's this does... Make it a little bit tricky, I guess. You know, and it depends. There's not much else there. People don't like that. So if we take him out, let's go oh, back here and look for a second. What about Carson Young at 7,400? I think I think yeah, I, I've heard more than one person mention him, and yeah. then that lets you get down to Parker Cootie if that's somebody you like. Which uh, looking through the ownership, I'm not the only one that's kind of warm to him. Dude played really well at what was that waste management? He, he played really well a couple weeks ago, and uh, the dude, he's I think he's the actual Cootie that bombs it further. I think he's the one that hits it for. Oh yeah, it was at it was at Farmers, which is even better, right? Um, uh, where uh, the, a course where bombing the shit out of it really helps. So uh, I think Parker Cootie might actually be better than Pearson at these long courses. 
And I think a couple of these guys here too, some pivots, just if you look like Bridgman, Highsmith, both two guys you could go to if you want to take another chance on Davis Riley. I know some people were mentioning him. He played here well a couple of years ago, but I think for, for the most I mean, part, just play, Davis Riley, just play Davis Riley at showdown, right? Your life's going to be so much better. Same thing with Garrett Kigo, same thing with EVR. You're going to have a much fuller and richer life. Yeah, let's do that one. We'll, we'll roll that one out there for now. Uh, let's let's check out something without, or I guess we'll do one more. Let, let's do Finau with Pendrith and yep. just see if, if people are going this route, where are they ending up? It's probably still with Stevens, right? Yeah. Vegas. And then, you think Davis? No, Vegas. Oh, Vegas. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. It, it's going to be too hard to get back up to Davis. And then let's Use see. Carl just to see what crazy. I wish there was somebody in the 5Ks that was the obvious donkey chalk that we could Man. just toss in there. You can't get up to this range. You got to, you know, your Carson Young play, maybe. Yeah. Maybe it's this, right? Like, you know, something like that, you think? Yeah, I, I don't mind that. Uh, yeah, I think it's, again, it's it might be too chalky for, for what we're looking at, but just in general, to see sort of the builds people are going with that. Let's look at, a ba uh, you know, let's switch it up. Let's go more balanced and move off Finau for a second and just see if you weren't going with Finau, what type of start are you considering? Because we talked so, earlier. I think Steven Yeager, Yeager. Yeah. is going to be very popular. Yeager should be the first guy in your lineup. If you're if you're staying off of the top guys, Yeager should be the first guy in your lineup, in my opinion, right? And then from there, I think you're going to almost certainly want to double up there in the 9K range, right? Um, yeah. Because, uh, like, the problem with skipping the top of the range, everybody's like, hey, I'm thinking about skipping the 10Ks this week. Do you think that's a good idea? And I always just ask – I always just ans answer with one simple question. Will your lineup still have enough win equity? Because what we know is you are probably going to need the winner of this tournament in your lineup if you want to have any chance of winning a GPP. So if you're building a lineup and it has a bunch of quote-unquote good players, but none of them are, are probably going to win the tournament, well, then you probably aren't going to win a GPP, right? That is why paying up over 10K becomes so appealing because that's where most of the win equity typically lies in a given week. Yeah, and if you want to know this, like we said, we've got it over on the stone that you bring up, but just talk through it from last week's perspective. You can go into that for a second. I think it's important for people to know, and this is where getting an edge and getting some competitive tools can help you. But like Scotty, if you were fading him last week, you were fading what was about a 10% equity win equity going in. Yep. When you do that, let's say you were dropping down to forget about the actual results of Morikawa eventually winning. But how would you be constructing knowing that there's 10% win equity up here? Did you just, wait, did you just say Morikawa won? I, I meant to say uh, Matsuyama. Sorry, Matsuyama. <laughs> I guess, like, yeah, I, I was looking at Morikawa because yeah. I was right here and I said, forget the fact that, but I meant to say Matsuyama won. But if you were starting with a guy like Homa or Morikawa, how would you look at it? Is that why you're saying like we got to get double the guys in because you want to pick back up a lot of that win equity, right? Yeah, yeah. You're get, I mean, look at it. Like if you uh, equal Max Homa, Morikawa, and uh, Iceberg's uh, win equity, it's still basically just what Scotty Scheffler is by himself, right? And so, like, we, a good goal is you want your lineup to probably have somewhere between 10 to 15% win equity, right? Because you need the winner of the tournament in your GPP lineup. So if you go build this lineup and it literally has, like, a 6% win equity because you're playing all these guys that don't win a lot, well, the problem is, is you're probably never going to win a GPP that week because your lineup doesn't have a very good chance of having the winner of the tournament. And we know you only win GPPs when you have the winner of the tournament and usually a bunch of other other guys, uh, you know, spat, uh, smattered throughout the top 20, right? I should note, this also tells you who the donkey chalk is. So good good tool to have, but let's go back and apply it. Again, you know, everybody on Ship and Nation will get that later. You can use the promo code Mayo to check that out. Steven Yeager would definitely fit this mold as a starting piece. And that's why you were saying, let's look in that 9K range. So who I else? Would you be plugging in here after him just to try and so get when I, when I build a lineup like this, I'm already so insecure about the win equity of my lineup. I'm going to try to gobble up guys that are going to have high win equity. And Taylor Pendrith is a guy with high win equity that we can get in there because we've got to make up for fading so much win equity up high with Hogard, with Finau, with guys like that. Yeah, and we don't, we don't have to finish it out like this, but just to show people now because this is kind of the angle that we always take it from is just to give you an idea of how the build looks different but the same is when you do it this way, you lose Tony Finau. I'm using just the same two punts we've been focused on just to give this idea so you can see what you're getting at. You're picking up what, again, some people probably don't even believe in Tony Finau's win equity, even though, again, he's like six to one to win it, but I get it. So when you're picking that up in, in Jagger and Pendrith, you now have 8,600. I wonder if it is that close. It really is. You can leave the 200 bucks. Yeah. Like So what, what was the 2v2 then? So it was Finau, it's Jagger and Pendrith, Versus Finau and let's see what's uh so he's what twenty two hundred more Finau so... in Vegas Finau in Vegas yeah, there, you, there go. you go yep so just so you guys know earlier that was the original chalky build we did that we said would be like a cash game 
style lineup. And I'm not, it's definitely not going to go way under, but this is just the balanced build version of it mm. where you can go in and build this way, leave a couple hundred bucks. This is where you can find a pivot or two. But I will note right now, this will be where I'd stop right quick and just say this. I think, James, like people, what they do is they build this and they go, there you go. I'm off fee now, so I'm good to go. Like we still have all the chalk in here. You did not do enough to make this solid enough for a large field tournament. Again, can it happen and go on to win one? Sure, anything can happen. It's golf. But what we're saying and what I'm trying to put out there right now is that even though you switched up the construction, you still kept sort of the same path throughout. You just changed it slightly because it'll be, you know, 20 and 15 range versus 35 and 15. Yeah, you got about 10% less cumulative, but you didn't really do much overall, right? There's, there's tens of thousands of people playing in the main contest this week. You're not going to be the only one that thinks of this little 2v2 pivot, right? As a yeah. good rule, if you were playing in those big contests, I always encourage you to have at least one strategic pivot in your lineup and one uh, 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 quote unquote punt, right? A riskier, low owned play. And if you want to do two pivots, that's fine. If you want to do two punts, that's fine. But just having those two pieces in there, a pivot and a punt, one of each will usually make you different enough with the rest of your lineup that you won't end up in these same builds as hundreds, if not thousands of others. So what I'm curious to see now then, like if we were going to do it our way or switch it up again, like you mentioned the 8K range, Let, let's just talk through for a second your favorite two gloves, Aaron Rye down to Ekro. If there was two guys in this range that you were going to just pick to be different, who are the two that would stand out to you right now? If we were just looking oh. at building out a lineup like this, Charlie Hoffman is going to definitely be the huge pivot of this range. Right. And let's not, let's not like sleep on it. Right. The only reason Charlie Hoffman is going to be so low owned is because he is perceived to be overpriced. But if you just look at the past two tournaments, like Charlie Hoffman's playing as good as any of these guys. Right. And Charlie Hoffman can flush some long irons. Right. Charlie Hoffman, Wait, yeah, he did make the cut. He just kind of fell apart on the weekend, right? It's well, just Chuck also a tougher course. Like, I know yeah. this is the other thing. People look, oh, well, he was doing so good, and then he sucked. It's like, no, remember, like, you needed to be top, top level to even hit 100 points at the Genesis of, like, way up the board. Obviously, 50th ain't going to cut it, but posting 74, 72, 73, is it good? No. Is it? Is it horrible? No. And again, factor in price, he, you know, 8,400. And you got to remember when I first started, price. when I first started playing PGA DFS, these were the Chuck Hoffman opens, right? You wanted him at these kind of shitty fields, right? So uh, I, I guess I still have that in the back of my mind, but he would be a great pivot. Um, I also think a guy, like if you want a high upside guy, what about like Jake Knapp? I mean, like, I, I don't know yeah. if this lineup can afford him, but like, I like that. I'm not sleeping on him. And then I got to tell you, I got a lot of I got a lot of sleaze bags down here in the in the five and six thousand dollar range that uh, I'm I'm open to. Right. So uh, this lineup right here, when I see I only have sixty seven fifty left for my last two spots, doesn't have me concerned at all. Yeah. And I think, again, just going to what the, the market's going to do. We've got our build. Right. You can round it out with Bramlett, who we talked about. You can round it with Higo. Now, again, do I think this is super well built uh, on the setup of, you know, get a, getting a lot of guys at low ownership? Probably not still like it from both product and cumulative, like you talked about, but at least it's a lot different than the you're You're still leaving out Davis Thompson, Tony Finau. You're leaving out uh, Sam Stevens. You're, you're leaving out some of the bigger pieces. It doesn't mean this won't be duped and that it'll be what, you know, super great when it comes to large fields, but there is Jaeger, Pendrith, Knapp. Then you've got Hoffman and a couple good punt plays. I can put this lineup in and say, okay, at least it's somewhat different than what we were just looking at when you were just basically building the exact same lineup with two different mid-tier 9K guys versus Finau and Vegas. So I think that's something to note. Uh, another way, go back to it here. What's another way you could build that? Because I just wanted to get the double 8K guy in there. What What's another way you're thinking to build I mean, this? I, I think with the, with these 5K pricings, I like the triple 9K. Why not a triple 9K? Go throw in old Killer Keith Mitchell, right? I, I, I mean, I, I really like him this week. And I think, yeah, you, is, you got 6,900 for your last... Several guys, and I, I there's just I'm telling you, there's some guys down in the five and six K's. You just put one of them in there uh that you like. Hell, even if it's Carl Yoon, you want to eat the donkey chalk Carl Yoon, he would really free up the rest of this lineup. Look, now that gets you back to 7250. Now you can go finish up with what Stevens and um Carson yeah. Young. You could go finish up with uh Bramlett and Vegas or whoever you want, right? There, you've got some options there. Yeah, pro probably can, right? Yeah, yeah, that's another one too. Good to note, actually. I love that you brought that one up. I'm always looking for these two V2s throughout the week. Every single Carson Young Stevens lineup can drop down 300 and go up 200 to uh, Vegas as well. So you'd still have 100 bucks left over to play with on top of it. But every Young Stevens can be Vegas Bramlett. So just to note, or Tyler Duncan, if you want in there two as well. But I think this would be the popular version of it. Let's just put that one through and just to see. 
go back to it again. Who are then, let's do this. Let's try a bottom up build before we get to some of the fun ones. Who would be the guy in the 5K range? You said you think there's some guys down there that you could mess around with. Who would be the guy in the 5K range that you'd want to go to here? Uh, I mean, I, I, if it, me personally, I, I've got some real sleaze balls. I think the Phil would be more likely to go with um, Callum Taren. But how about this one? Just l l l put Kevin Doherty in there for me. You already spoiled my sleepers while I'm sleepy. This guy mashes. This guy mashes. And you know I love a corn fairy guy coming up before everybody knows about him. You start with him, it opens up a lot of options. I'm telling you. Look, same finish Charlie Hoffman had yep. at the Farmers that Charlie Hoffman had at the Genesis and put up more points. Well, doing it a lot of birdies in here, so let's Plus go. The farmers, Kevin. the farmers isn't the worst course comp to this one I've ever seen. Yeah, let's get Ke Kevin get that dough, Ernie. Let, let's go. So we got oh, him in at fifty right. five hundred. Who who do we go to next? So I, I I mean now that you have him in there, you're really kind of free to do whatever the hell you want with the rest of your lineup. I mean look at that eighty nine hundred for your last six players, right? So it, it really now you kind of this is what I would tell people: go start playing guys you like now, right? Go get the guys in there you want. And uh, and then you can you look at that. We still got seventy six hundred. You could go what Vegas and but uh, in there um, somebody else right there at seventy six hundred. We like too. Uh, yeah, right. Oh, you could go. Yeah, you go with a Viking. Look at that. Uh, pl plus, look at the look at the international internationality of that lineup. Yeah, I, I do like one. I mean, a couple of things to say quickly just on that. If you do find a five k guy that you can get behind, whoever it might be, the nice part about it is that I think a lot of people that do end up going to the five k's do it for Tony. Right back to our original Tony Finau yeah, conversation. You just explained in the previous lineup of how you kind of like jamming these three 9K guys for win equity. And now actually, this is to my point earlier. Remember our chalkiest bill when I said that the funny part of it was it was heavily owned across the board, but it had a nice roster composition. Didn't have a 10K, didn't have a 9K, didn't have a 5K. This is kind of the inverse. No 11s, no 10s, no 8s, no 6s but you can't tell me that even with some of the popular guys here, that this will be a popular lineup. And you also can't tell me that it doesn't have the full rack ceiling upside for winning a, a GPP this week. When you've got, you know, winners on tour in here on top of the three, nine K guys, Kevin Doherty, who we talked about as the punt that we like, where you also have the, if this guy does anything and they just do their job, you feel pretty good about a lineup like that. So I actually like that one quite a bit. If Kevin Doherty gets you T28 at that price, you're dancing in the streets naked. Yes. Yep. I agree. Um, even if people were going to uh, go back to it, they can on their own, but just to uh, count Taron only a hundred bucks more. You just got to change up one play there somewhere to get after it that way. Uh, what was the other thing we said? Uh, you know, we, we'll save the Mayo special. What was the one? Uh, Spanish oh, they, speaking. Yeah. They speak Spanish. Grio. Grio. Get him in there. Jonathan Vegas has got to be in there. Hold on. Let me toasty? go. <laughs> yeah. Toasty. I'm going to assume, I don't know him personally, but uh, uh, certainly it's actually more of what people assume and why they, the, the false narratives out there of why they'll play a guy that that's really what it is. Now, so, Victor Perez is French, but he sounds like a guy that would speak Spanish. Does that count for anything? No, we got to keep okay. it going. We got to find uh, somebody else. Oh, yeah. oh, I know who your boy. Oh, did, did, did you know crystal ball? And it's a crystal ball Del Solar. If you want to just put it full, full English on it. And this is the guy that shot the 57. Mr. 57. We got I'm gonna assume in Rafael Campos. Uh and, th and then don't forget about Alvaro Ortiz, who I believe is who I believe is uh, uh Carlos's little brother, if I remember right. Yeah, let's see what happens here if we fit him in. 5,200. Yeah, we're gonna have uh, a hundred bucks though. shy of Fino. <laughs> Fino's a man of gold. Okay, so instead oh wait, there's gotta be a some random fifty one hundred dollar golfer that speaks Spanish. No, what did you oh. say? Campos. Yeah, we got it. Look, we got a pull, Mr. 57. He won't shoot a 57 again. Anyway, boom. boom. And we're going to just assume Finau speaks Spanish for our lineup. Well, he must. Look how good he plays in Mexico every year, I know. first and second. He's so, got to gotta know what they're saying when they're giving him those million-dollar checks. Yeah, so this is perfect. And you've got two guys up top, no 10K, no 9K, no 8K. What, what a lineup. What a lineup we got there. So that one's good. We'll plug that one in. And let me see here. Let's go back. We got to come up with the best version of the Mayo special. And then we'll get to our head to head draft. Like Mayo and I always do. Uh, we said it's almost like a bottom up build kind of like starting in the middle. It's Davis Thompson. It's Michael Kim. It's Higo. That's at least who I know for sure. Now, now who else can we put into this Mayo special? Who else can we put in that? We I know, know I, I know this, this, <clears throat> you got to remember, I've been listening to Mayo for way too long, but he used to be a big Kevin Chapel guy. He was the one that got me on Kevin Chapel all the time back in the day. I don't think he would want Kevin Chapel in his lineups today, but 
just I I always remember thinking, oh, that's a that's a Mayo guy. Yeah, uh, who else is Mayo like? I, um, Somebody yeah. else. He likes need, Wacky Valamaki. I know that we can plug him in. Yeah, we need we need like we need some Siwoo Kim or something here. Uh, oh, we got to get one of the woos. We, we got to yeah. get Brandon. We, we get Brandon. Yeah, Brandon's a much better. Plus, we got the money to get to Brandon. We don't need to save with Dylan. It leaves us Thunder Thunder Bear. What's his name? Olson. Thunderbeard Ocean. Yeah, and you can do the impression. This is the the best version. Oh, one sec. Let, let's plug that one in because it's close, but it's probably not exactly. That's what I said. We got to find the best one. And Tony's not like his guy, so that's fine. But he did bet Tony at eighteen to one. Oh uh, yeah, way, way so he'll be cheering then. hard for him. That but was a great you know bet. what? We got to go to the brother. I'm not going to try the impression. I don't have the chin for it or the voice. But yeah, if we get Cootie in there, you can go Cootie. He go. We can almost build backwards here. Davis Thompson. Yep. Plus um, Pearson. Pearson Cootie's dad probably uh, even when he has to play the afternoon rounds, his dad will come in and soften up the greens for him with the with the dome that he'll build over him. What else do we got here? Uh, man, it's just it, I just like the best now Mayo lineup. I guess we could call it. Would it be Toasty Hadley Lashley? We're, we're missing. S H Kim is almost like C Wu Kim, so we could have almost put him in. But. <laughs> Close enough. That's as good. Bucks short. Who else do we got here? Here's some cootie. Uh, trying to see if there's somebody else down here that he would like. What was Valamaki's price? 60, 67. Man. If we took out Tony and went to Valamaki, you can, oh, you, sorry, not Tony, uh, take out Wu. It leaves us on Dietry. Yeah, I mean, he's it. I, 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 oh, wait. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. What about Mitchell? Doesn't he like Mitchell? Is he a Keith guy or a Stephen? Ye- we'll do Dietrich. We just slammed him with a one euro to end out every version of the Mayo lineup. That's, that's Look, perfectly it's, fine. This it's one hard to got. get into the mind of a true genius like Pat Mayo. So we're just trying our best here, people. Yeah, we're just trying to get something. Let us know in the comments who we missed. You guys know, too. We obviously, I mean, I'm on the show with him every week. James has been on the show with him. We followed him for years, listened to his stuff. Uh, you know, deserves a vacation, but we're trying to make the best of it with what we can. Probably miss someone really obvious, but we'll go with that for now. James, do you have DraftKings up? I know you watch this. We do it every week. Pat has been crushing me. I think I've only won one week of the five that we've done this. But luckily, uh, you know, the narrative lives on. Hashtag not in studio. Still hashtag not in studio this week. So maybe I can win again. Had a big week last week. Hopefully can round it up again. Let's do the draft and you will have the honors as the playing the guest, I should say. I'm playing the host, doing an okay job, hopefully. But you are playing the guest. You get to pick to start it off. Anybody I want, right? Yep, anybody you right. want. S- Steven Ziega. Okay, you're going to go with Jaeger, so I'm going to take the next two. I'm going to go with, let me see here. I'm going to try and get just. Uh, yeah, get some fee now. You need fee now. Yeah, you I'm going to take him. If get you're going to leave him, I'm going to take him. Uh, if you didn't take him, I was going to be forced to, so I'm really relieved to see you taking him. Yeah, I'm trying to think of who I might actually want to put in here. Let's go with. Uh, Let's go down. Let's go down to our guy, uh, Michael Kim. Let's get him All right. in there. All right. I got the next two. Yeah. Give me Davis Thompson. This is, I just got to beat you, right? Yes. Just head to head. Sam Stevens. <laughs> You're just blocking me now. Just playing right. the game. I would never build this lineup, but I, I will for a 1v1. Yeah. I'm going to leverage your ass with Goddard up. Oh, now you're hurting my feelings. That's my boy. Yeah. And then who else can I put into this thing? Let me go with, uh, what do I have? 7,500 left? I'm trying to think, what what would Mayo do? What would Mayo do? Let, let's get his boy Carson Young in here. All right. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to keep, I'm going to just ride this donkey chalk train to, to all the way home. Give me Jonathan Vegas. <laughs> I got I to gotta be strategic what I want to finish with here. Uh, can I get back up here? Let's see, what if I, yeah, hell, give me Taylor Pendrith. Give me Taylor Pendrith. What What's does that leave you? Uh, seven thousand. Okay. If well, I had well, well, I shouldn't have told you that. I shouldn't have told you that. Now and you're gonna go grab even. a good seven K player. If I, if we were in studio, which I just said we're not, I would have still had it up, so I would have known. So you, you're a man of integrity. We go back to the uh, Spieth signing his scorecard back and forth. Uh, you know, saga, saga, whatever you want to call not it. Not noted for my integrity. Low character. Yeah. Low character DJ. That's what they call me. That's what they call. Seven hundred seventy-five. Exactly. Uh, let's see here. Let's see one, one, two more to round it out. I have 7650. As you can see on screen, I cannot use the same guys that you already picked. So 
Oh, look at Chess not- Chess and Hadley just calling your name. No, Nate Lashley, big Nate. I just I'm just trying to get you on shitty plays. And know. then I'm gonna go with the you didn't take the Viking, did you? No, I didn't bust out the old horn and start warning people that so they're this about is to This funny because I, I said this earlier. I, I like I don't mind these lineups this week. I think a lot of people with the Tony Finau conversation and ownership are gonna get sucked into using the 6k guy, the 5k and it can work. It probably will. I'm just saying, but the point of I saying sucked in is I don't mind this. No tens, no elevens, which is Grio. No tens, no nines, no sixes, no fives. I have Fino and Kim, who are probably pretty popular. There's some secondary in here, but with Goddard up and Lashley and the Viking and all this, I, I like this build. Who are you going to round out with at 7K, James? Just because my lineup has literally been nothing but donkey chalk so far, I think I'm going to just take a play that I think I like this week. You know, I could I could easily go with T-Dunk or Bramlett here, but I think I'm going to go with Novak to finish out this lineup. Like, I mean, did you see his approach last tournament he played? It was yeah. really good. Uh, plus, I saw him in person. He does not look like a guy you want to get in a scrap with. There's not many times I see a golf where I'm like, I don't want to fuck with that guy. Yeah, I like that call. Read out the lineup for the people. The you know, I just have mine up on screen. Yeah. They can check that out and go back through. What do you got total? All right, so we got Steven Yeager and Pendrith up top in the 9K range. Then in the 8K range, the solo play is Davis Thompson. And then in the 7Ks, we have three of them. We have uh, Jonathan Vegas, Sam Stevens, and Andrew Novak to round it out. So we have the two 9Ks, the 8K, the three 7K build. All right, sounds good. Speaking of rounding it out, let's round out this show. You're the you're playing me, so let the people know what we've got going on over at ShipItNation.com. There's PJ only packages, but also the all access, and then I'll get us out of here. Yeah, it's a real exciting time over at ShipIt uh, with the merger with this guy called DGen75. Not only do you get everything that ShipIt has already offered, you are now going to get everything that he offers, including tools like the Rosetta Stone, the best ownership, the best projections out there. And the best thing I could tell you is like if you're somebody who loves PGA DFS and you want to play it, you can get all of our PGA DFS and all of the sports for cheaper than you can get a, a single sport at almost any other site out there. There has to be a place where you can get all the tools you need to have a great foundation to build your process us and not have to be price gouged to do it that is what we're all about over at ship it i highly encourage you to check it out and use code dgen 15 it will get you 15 percent off any package we offer i would highly encourage you to use the annual and it comes out to 509 dollars for all sports for the whole year from the sweaty tryhards who are going to make sure that you have the best ownership the best projections and the best tools available that's what's going on at ship it exciting time come join the train yeah, excited for that. Jump on the rocket ship. We'll take off. I'm going to do the best Mayo outro that I can do. Be sure to smash the like, subscribe to the channel, check out everything as it comes out. It'll be out on the audio podcast feeds as well. Make sure you leave a five-star review. Leave a comment. Helps us out. We'll have contests for that upcoming in the future. In the comments, leave anybody that we missed that would have, should have, would have, could have went into the Mayo special. Get over to fantasynational.com. Use the code Mayo. Get 20% off there. All right. We'll see you guys next time. I'm Tyler Tambaline. This is the Pat Mayo Experience.